time we were actually um, uh, stuck here and this little joke about somebody giving all his inheritance <laughs> to, to himself in the next life. And we, we covered also that a karma will always ripen for the one who does the karma, not for anyone else. Karma that has been done will ripen as soon as it obtains an opportunity. That means that not, not all the things that we do immediately have an effect. A karma must always ripen sooner or later. It cannot be fled from. So there is a story that I mentioned to you before about somebody who actually physically tried to flee from the bad things that he had done. And then he, he eventually, his bad karma caught up with him. In the same way, on the positive side of the story, when you do something good, it will always one day catch up with you. It will always one day uh, affect your life. It will, it's not possible that you do something good and it will not have an effect. That is in Buddhism, that is considered impossible. So what the law of karma is not is blame something on your past karma. I, sometimes I write it with double M, sometimes with RM. This is the same word. Sometimes you blame it on God's will. Some people, this is actually in the Buddhist scriptures. We blame it on God's will that that is actually not the law of karma and to blame it on destiny. So the law of karma, first of all, it allows for, um, for, for you to change things. So it's not only, only past karma, okay? So that is wrong. And it's not also, it is an impersonal law. So the law of karma will exist whether the Buddha discovered it or whether there's a God or not, whether there's justice in the world or not. The law of karma doesn't care about any of that. It simply exists just like the law of gravity. There is no intelligence in it and there is no plan in it. That all sounds very dry and, and very uh, uh, maybe disheartening to some people, but that is a good way of looking at it because if we think that everything is justice, everything has a plan to it, everything has a meaning to it, then that means the suffering of people around us also starts to have a meaning. We think that the people that are poor should be poor because they have done something bad and the people who are handicapped or uh, what is the proper way to say that, physically disabled, then, then we will start blaming them because they did bad karma in the past. This is not the law of karma. This is just nonsense. So we, uh, we shouldn't blame things on some higher intelligence, which according to Buddhism does not exist. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that Buddhism refuses God, okay? I, I have, to, uh, have to make sure that you, you understand this correctly because some uh, Buddhist monks, especially from Sri Lanka and India, they try to make a point that Buddhism is against Christianity, but there is no historical, uh, there's no historical argument for that. In fact, Buddhism was on good terms with Brahmanism in the time of the Buddha, uh, especially at the later part of his life. And, um, there is no indication that the Buddha was against God or something like that. He simply thought of God as something that we should connect with through meditation rather than intellectual discussion. And he was, in fact, very critical of people who tried to intellectually understand God. So he did not use, he did also use the word God, but he used it in a meditative sense. He said, if you develop godly qualities like loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, in other words, develop a good heart and a stable mind, then you will become closer to God. This is not only symbolically so, but it's also believed in, in Buddhism that you actually will be able to, if you, are, if you wish to do so, then you're able to be reborn closer to God. But it's not considered the goal of life. It's just considered a religious goal that some people have. But it's not the goal of Buddhism itself. So there were some people who were Brahmins in the time of the Buddha who wanted to come closer to God. And then the Buddha taught that aspect of the Buddhist teaching. He would simply teach meditation. These people already led a very moral and ethical and inspiring life. 
but they did not have the habit of meditating. So he taught them about meditation. So when people these days say that mindfulness and meditation, just a moment, when people say these days that mindfulness and meditation cannot be disconnected from Buddhism, that's true, but even the Buddha already made that disconnection. So it's very common, in fact, from the time of the Buddha onwards, that certain parts of Buddhism have been taught to some people and not the whole package. Yes, 